Hello, my name is Archita Desai. I'm a transplant hepatologist at Indiana University and I practice at Indiana University Health in Indiana Indianapolis. I um, have a strong research interest in the quality of life that um, deteriorates with chronic liver disease, especially with cirrhosis. And I'm excited to talk to you about itching and chronic liver disease, which is a major symptom um, that our patients experience outside of the liver. So today I hope to cover the prevalence of puritis or itching that's related to liver disease. What are the outcomes that are related to itching when it is present with liver disease as well as some treatment options. Uh, often I get asked the question, am I the only one? Because it's a um, really challenging symptom that is unique to chronic liver disease. It turns out that up to 70% of patients with certain types of liver disease report itching as a bothersome symptom. Often these liver diseases are what we call cholestatic liver disease, meaning they affect how the bile flows in our liver. And um, this is perturbed in people who have liver inflammation, especially from diseases like primary biliary cirrhosis or primary biliary cholangitis. So even before cirrhosis develops, it is also seen in patients who have primary sclerosing cholangitis, which is a chronic liver disease that can damage the bile ducts of the liver, often the larger, larger ducts. We can also see itching associated um, with bile duct obstruction, meaning stones in the liver um, or in the common bile duct that's just outside of the liver. Um, itching is also seen in infiltrative liver diseases, such as sarcoidosis, um, and, and often because of bile duct damage and associated with that liver disease. Finally, pruritus can be seen um, as a very bothersome symptom in, in liver diseases that are associated with pregnancy, often leading to very poor quality of life. So the risk of puritis or itching over time is, is uh, fairly steady. This is a study of patients who have primary biliary cholangitis with or without cirrhosis. And as you can see, the prevalence is high. More than half of patients who uh, were diagnosed with the disease had complained of itching even as the years went on. The good news is that most patients have mild itching related to their uh, PVC, and very few patients have very severe itching, um, as can be seen in this study. From uh, Although it's back in 2003, we consider this to be valid. Unfortunately, itching with uh, liver disease can really deter um, quality of life as well as sleep um, in those who experience it. Specifically, puritis is associated with fatigue, anxiety, depression, as well as low quality of life in general. Specific to sleep, Itching can interfere with starting your sleep or sleep initiation. It can interfere with your sleep rhythm as you're sleeping, leading to early awakenings, leading to less restful sleep and then daytime sleepiness. This is a, uh, a graph of how our sleep cycles through the night. And what I'd like to point out is when itching is most likely to be experienced, which is in the early phases of sleep, but it is cyclic. And so patients or individuals who have itching with chronic liver disease can experience it throughout the night, uh, leading to that less restful sleep that I was commenting, as well as low quality of life during the day related to tiredness and daytime sleepiness. So the question we're left with is why do people with chronic liver disease really itch? As I mentioned, it's a unique symptom to liver disease. And unfortunately the answer is we don't really know. Many of the, what we call mechanisms or the pathways within our liver and our liver cells and in our body that lead to the sensation of itching are still being worked out. What we do know is that there are substances that normally the liver would handle in good health um, by circulating them, getting rid of them, metabolizing them that start to build up with chronic liver disease. Specifically, these substances are listed here and they include bile acids, which are circulated within the liver and the intestines and recirculated throughout. Um, and this can be perturbed in chronic liver disease and cirrhosis. We also know other substances such as histamine, sex hormones, serotonin, um, are all uh, either can build up and affect our, our sensation of itch 
We also know that other um, compounds such as our endogenous opioids um, and a toxin named autotoxin uh, can affect our itching. What's, what's also known about itching is that in patients with chronic liver disease, some of these buildups also affect how our nervous system responds to these substances. And some patients are uniquely susceptible to feeling itch when these substances are increased in our blood. So this is just a schematic and I don't wanna get into the details, but as I mentioned, there are all these substances that can build up with chronic liver disease and affect how our spinal cord, which is depicted here in tan and purple, uh, respond to those and leading our brain to feel that itch. And so these mechanisms are all still being worked out and many of the treatments that we have are targeted to these different phases of itching or the sensation of itch. So moving on to treatment uh, of itching. First of all, there are things that can be done in the home without medications that can help the sensation of itch. Specifically, we know that hot environments, whether it's hot water during a shower or being out in the sun can trigger itching. And so it um, can be beneficial to take cool showers or lukewarm showers, especially if you're susceptible to itching. We know that dry skin can make the sensation of itching that's related to liver disease worse. And so humidifying your home and preventing that dehydration through uh, moisturizing creams that are mild and don't have fragrances or many other um, irritating substances can help with that sensation of itch. Wearing loose clothing that's very breathable and airy is, is important um, in avoiding further irritating the skin. And most importantly, it's important to not scratch because that damage to the skin can further exacerbate the feeling of itching. Um, medically, there are many treatments that we've developed um, over time to combat the symptoms of itching or that sensation of itching. However, they don't work in everyone. And so often physicians are going down this ladder of treatment and trying one after another in the hopes of finding something that really takes care of the symptoms. Very rarely do we have to use combinations, but that's another possibility. So specifically, this diagram is trying to show how these different medications work. Um, as I mentioned, the, the buildup of bile acids can lead to itching. So in this, in this situation, cholestyramine, which is an, a, um, a resin that can bind up the bile acid within the intestines, can reduce the sensation of itching and is often our first line attempt at treating puritis and liver disease. Um, if this is not successful, we try other medications such as antihistamines or rif rifampin or rifamycin, which of course affects the bacteria that create some of these toxins that lead to itching. As I had mentioned, um, our, our own endogenous opioids can affect how much itch we feel. And so medications like naltrexone can reduce the sensation of itch over time. Um, while Zoloft was developed as an antidepressant, we know that it affects how our brain interprets these signals. And so taking sertraline or the, the generic of Zoloft can reduce the sensation of itching in many people. Um, uh, I'll move on to to some other options, excuse me. So there are ongoing clinical trials that are targeting this symptom that is common to many of the cholestatic liver diseases, as I mentioned, specifically one that is just completing clinical trials is a medication that bind, that inhibits or stops the work of ileal bile acid transporters. And this is a depiction of how bile acids are circulated from the liver to the intestines and then back towards the liver. Specifically, they're reabsorbed, meaning they're secreted into the intestines and then picked back up through after digestion through the blood flow and go back to the liver. And this compound is stopping that process. And the hope is to reduce the amount of bile acids in the blood, which lead to the sensation of itching. 
And we're still waiting for larger trials to see if this treatment will be effective. In more refractory cases, meaning when the medications that I mentioned previously don't work, we have some more uh, invasive options. These are options that are beyond just taking a medication or changing what you eat um, or the lotions that you use. Specifically, they include light therapy. We know that different types of UV radiation can help the skin move the substances that cause itching out and back into the blood supply. And so this has been used in some patients with very severe uh, itch. Um, the downsides, of course, are a higher risk of skin cancer. So it's really reserved for more severe cases. Uh, plasmapheresis, which is um, done through this machine depicted here in the middle, is basically an exchange where the, the individual's plasma is taken out, filtered, and new plasma is put back in, again, with the hopes of reducing the toxins that are causing our brain to feel the itch. In um, truly refractory cases, meaning none of the medical treatments that I've discussed right now, or these more aggressive options um, um, resolve itching, we can use liver transplantation. Normally that is reserved for patients who also have reduced liver function and signs of liver failure. However, exceptions can be granted when itching is so severe that it's in, um, lowering the quality of life and un, um, allowing, not allowing them, uh, the individual to go back to work or enjoy their day-to-day. -day. Again, this is not the usual route, but is reserved for very severe cases. So I'll stop here and I appreciate your time and attention on this important topic. It's um, very important that I mention itching is often a symptom that we don't have time as physicians to ask about. So if you're suffering from chronic liver disease and this symptom, please bring it up to your providers. As you can see, there are many treatment options that are available and can improve your day-to-day -day quality of life. Thank you. Mm -hmm.